You know, I remember at uni, we were encouraged to be scientists, practitioners, working with clients, being across the literature so that we're using evidence-based therapies. And then we're also, you know, theoretically publishing our work in a beautiful virtuous cycle of science and practice. Now, some of us felt a little bit intimidated by that expectation, but Rita, you've actually been doing that. Yes, Ruth, in all of my spare time, I have been trying to really kind of live up to the scientist practitioner model. And in fact, as you know, here in the lovely state of Victoria, we were in lockdown for about four months last year. So I decided with my colleague, Dr. Pam Pilkington, why not publish as many papers as we possibly can because we can't go anywhere. So this seven minute schemas is really a busy practitioner's guide to the research. I'd like to introduce the lovely Dr. Pam Pilkington to talk to us about the ACES study that we published earlier this year. Thanks Rita. So that was the, um, that was the first review we got our teeth stuck into and then we had a, a few after that. Um, so this one was really interesting because I was looking essentially at the theory underlying all of schema therapy, which is that um, met needs in childhood and experiences where uh, people didn't feel supported or nurtured uh, lead to schemas. So we all know that underlying theory, but we really want to look at, okay, what's the evidence out there? What, what does the literature show in support of that? That's right. So we, we ended up focusing in on um, toxic frustration of needs. So that's emotional neglect and physical neglect. And then we also looked at traumatization and victimization. So that's, yeah, as you said, physical abuse, sexual abuse, um, emotional abuse as well. And how did you do that? Were you doing review? What, how did, what was the sort of methodology? This was a systematic review and meta-analysis. So we pulled together all of the different papers that have uh, used the YSQ, the Young Schema Questionnaire, as a measure. And then within those, we funneled down to the studies that had looked at the links between YSQ responses and experiences of neglect and abuse. And we had some really interesting findings. And I guess one of the things that stood out for me being a mum is that mums seem to be really kind of influential in schema acquisition in some ways. We get a little bit of a bad rap. <laughs> so Pam, do you want to just kind of talk through some of the findings that we found in terms of the particular ACE and the, and the, the schemas that were most prevalent? Yeah, so one, one interesting finding um, was the the strongest relationship between any schema and any adverse experience was between maternal emotional neglect and emotional deprivation. So I was really surprised by the strength of that association. <clears throat> and then another really interesting finding was that the, the two types of abuse or neglect that were related to the most schemas, so the strongest predictors and the most consistent predictors of schemas were emotional neglect and emotional abuse. So <clears throat> some people might be surprised that it's not the more overt or acute forms of abuse, such as physical abuse or sexual abuse, but it's the, that emotional maltreatment that is really strongly related to schema formation. And that's a really important finding then, isn't it? Because one of the real strengths of schema therapy is that in, li in limited reparenting and, emotion and imagery rescripting, we're really kind of trying to target the complexity of the relationship dynamic that this person experienced. So it's not um, just trauma focused processing, you know, on a specific event or a, um, an, a kind of incident of violence. It's the relational dynamic. Right. So we really, in imagery rescripting, we really need to be targeting um, the lack of maternal, parental warmth, lack of emotional warmth from parents. And there's similar findings to the adverse childhood experiences study as well, that it was the emotional um, trauma or abuse or neglect that um, had the significant adult difficulties, not just psychologically, but physically, etc. Yeah. Yeah, what about that's right. I think something to do also with the social isolation schema, is that right? Yes, yeah, so the most interesting finding to me personally was uh, the finding that the social isolation schema was actually related 
across the different forms of abuse and neglect. So I think a lot of us think of social isolation in terms of um, experiences of rejection by peers or um, feeling different because of cultural or, or ethnic differences. Um, but what we found was that experiences of abuse and neglect, even sexual abuse and physical abuse are really strong correlates of uh, the social isolation schema. So again, I think that points to the need in imagery rescripting. So if we have a client who presents with a social isolation schema, um, not just rescripting experiences or instances where they felt rejected by other people, but also processing those traumatic experiences is going to help to heal that social isolation schema and that feeling or sense of being fundamentally different. I've certainly had that in, in the room with people who have a really strong sense of being othered, being, you know, mm -hmm. by their experience, that it's, it's the intensity of the distress about their um, abuse experience, but it's also keeping a secret at school, not being able yes. to share or feeling like there's something really wrong with you um, because these things have happened. And I, I think that's such an important thing for us to be looking at with social isolation, particularly. Yeah, so kind of the messages that they took from those experiences. So this is the abusive situation, but what does that say about me? I'm different. I don't belong. I'm weird. If people get close to me, this is what they're going to find out about me, etc. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a really, really important schema to, you know, sometimes I think about it in terms of schema networks. It may be that perhaps that schema wasn't elevated on the YSQ, but something to think about that if these things are happening, what are the likelihood of the schema networks that I need to be mindful of in, in the um, clinical presentation? Well, that's our seven minutes. So I want to encourage people if they would like to access the article to look at the link at the end of the clips here. And if you want further information about training, uh, or more tools, more research, go follow the link at the end of this video.